Good morning, students. Yesterday we have discussed up to basic two PL, and we have discussed about the what is the growing phase, sinking phase, all these things, and even we have discussed about the locking point. So today we will discuss about the how the serializability has been achieved using the two PL protocol, the serializability, and we will discuss what are the other problems like we have a deadlock problem, and we have. Um, Cascading rollback problem also we will face using the 2PL. So we we will solve one problem which is the serializability problem. However, we have a cascading rollback problem and we have the deadlock problem in the 2PL. So all these things we will discuss today. So now if you see that all these schedules, we have taken there is a one transaction. So there is a schedule which is consists of three transactions: transaction one, transaction two, transaction three. Now we have to look at each transaction. There is a lock on B, exclusive lock on A. So it has taken shared lock, exclusive lock on A, unlocked it. Okay, no problem. It has taken a shared lock, exclusive lock, unlock. Okay, no problem. Shared lock, exclusive lock, unlock. Now we have to see the interleaving also. Here the transaction D2 has taken a shared lock. Again, shared lock is allowed. It has taken an exclusive lock on B because no one has taken any lock on the B, so it is okay. And it has unlocked and it has taken an exclusive lock on C. Is it clear? It has taken an exclusive lock on C, but till now no one has taken any lock on C, so that is allowed. Now, unlock of B because it is unlocking the B, it is releasing the B, so it has released all the locks. Now, as it was released the exclusive lock, it is allowed to take the shared lock and exclusive lock on A. Why it is allowed? Because already transaction 3 has unlocked before, unlocked the shared lock before it was trying to take an exclusive lock. So it is also allowed. So all these operations are safe to execute. Now we will see the growing phase, shrinking phase and the lock points. Then we can, we, people can understand what is the, how it is achieved the serialized property. So for the transaction one, this is the growing phase and this is the sinking phase. Similarly, transaction two, the growing phase is this one and the sinking phase is this one. Okay. And like yesterday also I have discussed the growing phase is that during the phase, the transaction will acquire all its lock. During the sinking phase, it will release the locks. So in this phase, transaction three has taken all its locks and it has release of the locks okay so now we have even discussed what is a locking point any transaction taking its final lock is the point we call it as a locking point so for this one the locking point is this one for this one the locking point is this one now if you see the series of locking points in all the transaction t1 t2 t3 if you see there is a series the first lock point was done by transaction 2 and the next lock point was T3, am I right? Then next lock point is T1. So this is the order of series. This schedule, if it executes, it is safe to execute. Are you able to understand? We have identified the lock points of all the transactions. If you write the lock points in this order, then you will find the what is the serializability or what is the series of operations if it execute then in this transaction will be see or I can say that this is the serial schedule which will make it as serializable it means it is equal to either it is conflict equivalent to this serial schedule or it can be a view equivalent to this schedule so all these things we have discussing so this is what the serializability now let me discuss the next problem what we will face using the 2PL First, let me discuss about how the deadlock is still there in the basic 2 PL. Okay. Now, there is a two transaction, transaction 1 and transaction 2. It has taken an exclusive lock on A. It has taken an exclusive lock on B. It is trying to take the exclusive lock on B. And it is trying to take an exclusive lock on A. Now, if you see, unlocks all these things, no need to write. Okay, now transaction 1, 
and transaction two is there. Now transaction two has taken an exclusive lock on A. Okay, transaction two has taken an exclusive lock on B. If you see that the first two operations are well executed because till now no one has taken any lock on data item A. So it is allowed to take the exclusive lock. Similarly, this transaction 2 is also allowed to take an exclusive lock on the data item B. Now the actual problem will come. Now the next operation it is trying to execute the exclusive lock on B. But already someone has taken the exclusive lock on B. So this is not allowed. So what the transaction 1 is waiting is the transaction waits for if it want to execute this operation transaction 2 has to release this lock if transaction 2 releases this lock then only it is possible so transaction 1 is waiting for the transaction 2 to release the lock so transaction 1 is now depend on transaction 2 can i say because transaction 1 exclusive lock operation is allowed only when the transaction 2 releases this exclusive lock so transaction 1 is now depend on transaction 2 now let's see this operation exclusive lock and when this is allowed when transaction 1 unlocks this exclusive lock then only it is allowed so now transaction 2 is waiting for the transaction 1 to complete so transaction 1 is waiting for transaction 2 complete transaction 2 is waiting for transaction 1 to complete so they are in a cycle so this probably and that cycle we cannot solve in a finite amount of time so we can call this situation as a deadlock okay so the deadlock problem is still there in the basic 2 pair or we can say the two phase lock in protocol now the next interesting problem we will face using the basic tutorial is cascading rollback problem. When we are discussing about the problems in the non-serial schedules, we have discussed several problems like recoverability problem, cascading rollback problem, all these things we have discussed. So now we will discuss about how this problem will happen in the basic tutorial, the cascading rollback problem. Let me give a small example. Transaction 1, transaction 2, transaction 3 is there in the schedule. Okay, now let's say it has taken an exclusive lock. Okay, it has taken the shared lock. Unlock A. Oh, sorry, shared lock on B. Let's take it. Unlock B. Here there is a write operation. There is a read operation. Let's take it. This is read on B. Okay. And this transaction is allowed to take the shared lock on A and reading it. Okay, this is writing and this is reading. Unlock A. Okay, and it even takes an exclusive lock on B and it has written something, then only it is unlocked A, unlock B. Let's make it soon. And then, okay, but as there is space, let me take only two transactions, transaction 1, transaction 2, because if I write transaction 3 operations here, it will be confusing. So let me take two operations, transaction 1 and transaction 2. Now there is a, another operation called rollback. Okay, it is taking the rollback operation and it is taking the rollback operation. So to, me, to give you an uh, illustration that, uh, okay. Let me not to go much here. Let me take there is a rollback here and there is a rollback here. So this is a non-serializable schedule because this operation, this operation, this operation, this operation. So it is a non-serializable schedule. So now what will happen? Now please listen carefully. There is a write operation and then there is a read operation on the same data item. Now when the cascading rollback problem will happen because you are transaction 2 is reading the uncommitted data of the transaction 1 because if you see that write operation has done but till now there is no commit operation if you can go through the cascading rollback problem when where we have discussed in the classes that if transaction 2 is reading the uncommitted data of transaction 1 if it roll backs then it also should roll back so this problem we will call it as a cascading rollback problem. Still it is there in the 
basic tubules. So we have discussed how the serializability is achieved and how the deadlock problem is still there and we have discussed how the cascading rollback problem may occur in the basic tubule protocol. So with this one I will end today's videos. So to, in the next video I will discuss about the other variants of the basic tubule like uh, conservative tubule, strict tubule, regress tubule, all these things one by one I let me discuss with. Thank you.